Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope both of you're doing really, really well. And we're back into the club football team. The international break is over and we'll be covering that again in the next international break, which is in October. But now it is time to talk about the Champions League group stage. And I gave you a bit of an early reaction when the draw happened immediately. But now I had some more time, time to think about this group, all the groups. And this is my final prediction before the group stages start next week. So, if you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like my videos in general, please subscribe to the channel as well. Leave me, your, leave me your prediction for the group stage in the comment section down below. And let's get into it. So, starting off with Group A, you've got Bayern Munich, you've got Manchester United, you've got Copenhagen, you've got Galatasaray. So, in fourth position, in my opinion, it is going to be Copenhagen. I think they're going to be finding it very hard in this group, in my opinion. Uh, I think those three teams are just loads better than compared to them. I think Copenhagen will be the batching boys of this group. Now, if we move to third, now I had a good think about this. I thought, could they make it? Could they? Could other teams surprise? But I have come to the decision. It will be Galatasaray in third. Now, Galatasaray actually had a very interesting summer. Torreira's come in. Mertens came in. Uh, Icardi came in. Galatasaray have been super active in the market and getting Champions League quality players. They were linked with Sergio Ramos at some point. But I've seen their play in the Turkish League. They're not that great. I think it might be just the players need a bit more time together. Uh, I just don't think they're going to get enough for Manchester United. I know Manchester United are in a great place. But I just think it will be Galatasaray in third. We made the second. In my opinion, it is going to be Manchester United in second in this group. Uh, I think they got Amrabat available, they got Rashmus Hoyland available, and I think they will be not fine in this group. I think they'll beat Copenhagen and Galatasaray both home and away, most likely. I think maybe Galatasaray away is the toughest out of that lot, but I think United should have personally enough to finish top of this group, I mean second in this group. And of course, from at the top of the group, it is going to be Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich under Thomas Tuchel, have signed Harry Kane this summer, have signed Kim Min Jae this summer. The team's level is only going to increase and I think that's a good sign if you're a Bayern fan. And I do think they're going to absolutely storm this group. I think United will be a challenge for them, but not enough to really stop them. I do think Bayern will finish this group top. Next group we move, it is Sevilla, it is Arsenal, it is PSV, it is Lance. A very tight group. So we'll start from bottom. In my opinion, fourth will be PSV Eindhoven. I think PSV Eindhoven losing Ibrahim Sangare is going to be a big loss for their midfield. I do not trust Peter Brosh to keep them defensive sound. Where you're going to have great attacks, who's going to cause you problems. And I just think PSV, mm, I'm, I'm just not very sure on them yet. I think they've got some great pieces though. Bakayoko being one. Uh, Sabiri, the left winger, seems very talented. The, losing Savage Simons though, I think it's going to affect them. Losing Sangare, it's going to be bad for them as well. So I think PSV in fourth. Moving on to third in my opinion, and it is going to be Sevilla. I think Sevilla will be getting demoted to the Europa League where they have where they can have another crack over in the Europa League. Because in the Champions League, I think their recruitment has been very patchy. Their league performances speak for themselves. Three losses in a spin just before the international break. And this Sevilla team just does not give me any sort of confidence. I know they'll make the Ramon Sancho Espiz one a really tough place to go for teams, but I just don't think they're going off, to be honest. To come second, and that's surprising because I think most people wouldn't have said Sevilla to come second. But I don't think that's going to be quite the case. I think Sevilla will be third in this group. Moving on to second, in my opinion, though, is Lance. Lance runs up in Liga last season. And they have mostly kept Astro in the squad, to be honest. And adding Eli Wahi into the mix with Luis Pender leaving. So, I think Lance, yeah, they haven't had the most amazing start to the league. But they are a good team, and I think... As the season goes on, they will pick up. Uh, now, you might say, why didn't Sevilla could do the same? But I just think Sevilla had a similarly bad season last year around. Them starting on the same footing is not ideal. I think for Lons, they were fantastic last year. And I think this just might be a blip. So I've gone a second for them. I think they, they are going to be a problem for most teams. The, the 3 4 2 1 shape that Frank Hassel likes to play, making life very difficult for the opposition, high pressing. And I think they're going to be a problem. I think PSG went there and lost 3 0, 3 1. I can't remember exactly last year and so you can't me not say that Lons are not in contention for second which I think they'll get first though in this group if it is going to be Arsenal. Arsenal got very lucky with this group 
And if Arsenal do not top this group, I think there's serious questions need to be asked. Now, Mikel Arteta's side have started the Premier League season well, 10 points from 12. And I think the quality they got on the squad, Saka, Declan Rice, Odegaard, Martinelli, Jesus, uh, Trossard, I think they got a lot of quality and I just think they're going to be a class above the rest in this group. And I think they will finish top of this group nice and easy. Moving on to Group C. Okay. Okay. So, you got Union Berlin. you got Braga, Real Madrid, Napoli. Now, I actually thought this would be quite an easy group. But it is not going to be an easy group for anyone. So, in my opinion, fault of this group will be Braga. I think Braga will be finishing bottom of this group. Very harsh. Because I just think the other three teams are just better than them at the moment. I think Braga under Arta Rorje are a decent team. You've got Ricardo Horta, who seems like a decent player, but I just don't think they're going to have enough compared to the other three teams. Despite being a good team, I just don't think they're going to have enough. Um, maybe they surprise. I think they will get a result against Union Berlin, maybe a sneak in a draw against Napoli, maybe just never know, sneak in a result against Real Madrid. But I just don't think they're going to have the consistency to get them out of this group. And that's the same, I think, for Union Berlin. Union Berlin will be exiting the Champions League group stage by getting them so demoted to the Europa League. I think they'll finish third. I think they got some good players. Brendan Aronson, Dato Fafana, Becker. There is talent in that team, but when I look at Napoli and when I look at Real Madrid, it just doesn't match up to those two teams. And I think Union Berlin, their home games are going to be absolutely massive. If they really have hope of getting out of this group, I think they need to get at least minimum two wins out of three to realistically stand a chance in their home games. Uh, I just don't think they're going to have enough. Moving on to second, in my opinion, it is Napoli. I think Napoli going to finish second. They got a great attack. Cavara, Ozinem, um, you got Politano, Lundström, uh, Elmas in midfield, Zelensky in midfield, Onkisa, Lokbata. Fantastic team now. They have lost Kim and Jay at the back. So let's see how they cope without him. They haven't really replaced him as, as far as I see in the squad. One Jesus seems like the guy who's been playing from weirdly enough. So I think defensively they're a red flag and that's why I have gone second for them. And top the group, in my opinion, it is going to be Real Madrid. Real Madrid have started the season really, really well. Drew Bellingham, star of the show so far for Real, scoring loads of goals. Um, and also you've got many other quality players. Midfield, I think, got Camavinga, Chouamini, uh, Cruz, Modric, now I know Courtois out, I know Vinicius, I think it's going to be out for the first game at least, but I just think they're going to have enough in this group, they should be having enough, maybe get, they go to the Maradona and lose, Smith's group D, a very exciting one actually, you got Benfica, you got Inter, you got Salzburg and you got Real Sociedad, so, in bottom place, in my opinion, it is RB Salzburg, RB Salzburg have got some good players, Kevin Conate, uh, you got the Matilda, Lucas Grat, I really, really like him. Seedwell, I think they, they, have, they have some good pieces. I just don't think they're going to have enough, to be honest, compared to the other three teams. And now I had a real dilemma. Sociedad, Benfica, Inter, who was I going to pick for third? And in my opinion, it is going to be Real Sociedad. Now, Real Sociedad, very fun team. Takafu, Takakubo, fantastic campaign. For international break for him, scoring, I think, assisting against Germany, scoring one as well, uh, Oyatabal, Andre Silva, Zakarian, Januszaj, Porto, Silva Mendy, I think this Real Sociedad squad is exciting, very, very talented team, and I think they will give Benfica a really tough time in this group, for sure, and even Robbie Salzburg for that factor, Karim Kranate is a great striker, so I don't think anyone who gets out of this group will be having an easy time, for sure, I think all four teams will give each other a good game. I think it could be in any sort of order, in my opinion. It could be RB Salzburg at top, so should I take it into third and, and uh, of course, Benfica fourth. But I think at the moment, so I should add, I think the ch lack of Champions League experience will, will be missing. I think they might mis make mistakes compared to Benfica, who are much more used to playing in the Champions League, big nights. And if I look at Benfica's business as well, very, very good. Uh, you got... Of course, Kuchku being brought in, you kept Florentino Luis, you kept Jao Mario. Now, I know they lost Gonzalo Ramos, so I think let's see how they feel that centre-forward role. Uh, in defence as well, Anthony Silva, Tomas Araujo, Otamendi. Uh, that's a lot of t that's a lot of talent. And I think Roger Schmidt has done a fantastic job with them. First round round, they almost topped the group. They topped the group with PSG and Juve in it. So I definitely think they should have enough to qualify 
out of this group. And then we move to the top side. It is Champions League finalists Inter Milan. I think Inter Milan last year fantastic uh, campaign for them. They qualified for the next stage of the Champions League. I mean to the final of the Champions League. Great campaign. The way Lazaro Martinez, Brozovic, Barella, Onana, everyone played was fantastic. Now they got Jan Sommer for Onana. They got Pavard in there. Uh, they got Marcus Thuram. They had a fantastic start to the league campaign. I just don't see a way they do not top this group. I think Inter Milan are a very strong side. And I think they'll be top in this group. We move to Group E. So Group E is actually quite a good one as well. So you've got Feyenoord. you got Atletico Madrid. Lazio. Celtic. So straight off the bat, I think it's going to be Celtic. I do not think Brendan Rodgers is enough to really take the squad to the next round of the Champions League. And if I look at the other group teams, I think they're just better than Celtic at the moment. Uh, moving to third, in my opinion, it is Feyenoord. Feyenoord. Dutch champions, but they have had a pretty slow start to the Eredivisie, but they have mostly kept all of their players. I think that's a positive for Feyenoord. Um, I just don't think they're going to have enough to, to over overcome Lazio, who I think, in my opinion, will be second. Lazio now, I know they lost their first two games of the season, but then they saw Matteo Conduci, which is a brilliant player. Ravella, really good player. Uh, I think... They have done some really good business, and I think under Mauricio Sarri, yeah, they'll start slow, but I think they'll get better as the season goes on. And I think final and last year played each other in the Europa League. They beat each other once. So, and Atletico Madrid are going to top this group. They're by far the better team in this group. I think last year, maybe they can give them a game. Feyenoord, maybe. But I just think Atletico Madrid are in such good form right now. I think it's going to be really, really difficult for uh, Lazio and final to top this group, in my opinion. We move to Group F. We've got Paris Saint-Germain, Borussia Dortmund, AC Milan and Newcastle United. So, bottom of the group, Borussia Dortmund. I think Borussia Dortmund are going to finish bottom of the group. Now, that might sound surprising. Oh, Milan, Newcastle, no. Um, Borussia Dortmund have not had a good start to the league. Their business has been pretty average in my opinion. Sabitzer, yeah, decent player but very injury prone. Nemecha, is he going to take you... To the dreamland, I don't know. The defence, they brought in Ram Benson Bainey, but that's the only signing they made. I think they needed more. Had they really uh, done enough, in my opinion? No. Do I rate their coach, Edin Terzic? No. Seems more reliant on friendships and all that. I don't, I'm not a big fan. I think tactically you need to have something about you. And he doesn't. Um, I think even in the wings position, you've got Daniel Marlin, who hasn't really shown his true level since leaving PSV. So, Dortmund fought. Uh, third, in my opinion, it is going to be Newcastle. If I look at Newcastle squad, I just don't think they've got enough to manage this Champions League group. If I look at the other couple of teams, I think they're better placed. Um, Newcastle, they have had a good window, can't lie. They've got in Harvey Barnes, uh, they've got in Sandro Tonali. They've got some good paces to this team, but I still think it needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of adding. It needs a lot of tweaking to before they'll be making the knockout stages. Now, Newcastle will definitely give Milan a hard time. Uh, but I just don't see it. I just don't see Newcastle. At the moment, they're very reliant on pressing the opposition. I don't think on European night, teams are much more composed now. They can play out through pressure much, much better. So, I just don't think they're going to have enough, really, to be honest. And second, in my opinion, it is AC Milan. They have had an absolutely amazing summer, despite selling Sandro Tonali. Vigindes being brought in. Musa being brought in. Lottichik being brought in. Pulisic. Leal. Such an amazing team right now for Milan. Oka 4 as well, who are really, really rated, a very talented striker. And they brought in UK over. So the talent in this AC Milan squad is, is definitely there. I do think they'll do well in the Champions League this time around as well. Last time around, they got to a semi. So I think they're going to go to continue this good work. Now, PSG, yeah, I think they should have enough to top this group. I think they're a fantastic side, to be honest. And I think under Luis Enrique, as the season goes on, I do expect to see gradual progression. And I think they are my dark horses. To do really well in the Champions League this time around. Um, I think the, some of the signings they brought in. Ugarte looks fantastic. Uh, you got, of course, Usman Dembele, Colo Moani, Gonzalo Ramos. So much quality, so many options. I think that could make a huge, huge difference for PSG. Now, whenever I looked at this PSG team, I saw a great starting lineup. And then I'm like looking towards the bench and I'm like, ah, this bench is a bit average. But I cannot say that with PSG right now. I think they've got a lot of quality in their bench as well. And that could be the difference in big European games. Imagine you've got Kolo Moani coming on to win your game. That's the difference. And I think that's why PSG is just going to be too good in this group. I think they've got a class above the rest at the moment. Moving over, we've got Group G. It is Manchester City, Leipzig, 
Karen as ever, young boys, so I'll be playing. I think if that's the order it's going to stay in. I don't think I need to do much analysis. Young boys, yeah, decent team could cause a problem in Switzerland, but I just don't see it. Same with Karen as ever, uh, Red Star Belgrade. Eh, I just don't think now they're going to have enough. Library Leipzig lost Guardio now as well. And to be honest, they brought in some good players. Xavi Simon, Carvalho. Uh, Simakan is back, hopefully, from injury. Lubaka. They have some good pieces, but I just don't think they're going to have enough for Man City. So I think it's going to be Young Boys, Karen as ever. I think Karen as ever, slightly better than Young Boys. Uh, Leipzig in second. I think they'll be clear in this group. And Manchester City. Now we move to the final group. It is Barcelona, PS Porto. Shakhtar Donetsk and Royal Antwerp. So here's my surprise. Fourth position, Shakhtar. Uh, Shakhtar have had their move, home games moved now to Hamburg. They're not going to be playing at the Legia Warsaw Stadium. I do not like their squad. I don't think there's much in their squad, to be honest. I just don't think Shakhtar are a great place. Now, they did well last time around, but I think it was more down to Modric absolutely blowing up. But I just don't think they got that sort of quality anymore in their squad. I don't think they got a many... Talented players, it's only majorly based off Ukrainian players, and I don't think it's got enough. They got Matvienko, a talented centre back, but that's all about it. They lost Trubin as well this summer, I just don't see it. Moving to third, in my opinion, it is Royal Antwerp, Belgian champions, and we had some amazing drama in the Belgium league. Now then, Champions League, they are in talks as we speak to sign Eden Hazard, and they got a very talented midfielder in Arthur Wierman, who seems like a big name in Belgian football. I think they're going to surprise the group stage. I think they'll nick a Europa League group stage phase. I mean, the Europa League places. I think that alone will be a great campaign for them. I think they could push Porto, but I think Porto's experience get them through. And in second, it is Sergio Conceição's Porto. Uh, Alan Verreira is being brought in. I like that signing. Good player in midfield. Uh, I just think they got enough to top and get the group in second. And top the group, Barcelona. I think Barcelona, in the last two years, getting knocked out of the group stages. If they get knocked out of the group stage this time around, I think it'd be really, really poor. But I don't see it. I think they're going to dominate this group quite easily. I think this is a very nice group. I think if you ask Xavi before the group stage draw, would you take this group? He would have said yes. So there's no excuses not to do well in this group. Now, I know they've got some injuries. Araujo's out for the first couple of games. Pedri's out. Gundogan's out. But still, there's so much depth in that Barcelona side. I just don't think they should be doing anything worse than first place, in my opinion. But anyway, this was my Champion League preview to the group stage. I, mean, I also did my predictions. So according to my predictions, Barca, Porto, City, Leipzig, PSG, uh, Milan, uh, Atletico Madrid, Lazio, Inter Benfica, Real Madrid, Napoli, Arsenal, Lens, and Bayern Munich and Manchester United. That's my 16 teams to go through. We'll of course analyse it once the group stage is done. And I'm hoping to get at least 13 out of the 16 teams correct this time around. So, anyway, if you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like my videos in general, please subscribe to the channel as well. Leave me your opinions in the comments down below. Leave me your predictions for the group stage in the comments down below as well. And I hope to see you guys later for another video.